Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to continue with R and we are starting data frames. So in this exercise they're explaining what a data frame is and their basic explanation is that in a matrix in a in a uh, vector we could only have one data type but in a data frame we can have multiple data types. A data frame has the variables of a data set as columns and the observations as rows. This will be a familiar concept for those coming from different statistical software packages such as SAS or SPSS. I don't know what those are, just thought I would read it for anybody who has that kind of a background. So this is a built-in R data frame called MT cars. I don't know what it means. They have the names of each row is a car, uh, make, model, and whatever. And then the names of each column is the name of each column. So you have 21 miles per gallon, six cylinders, you have the displacement horsepower, all that. Um, and now we're gonna move on to the next exercise. Okay, so um, one thing that I had learned about R back when I first heard about it was it's for working with large sets of data. And what they're saying in this exercise is that when we have large sets of data, we can display only sections of that data if we want to keep it simple a bit. So they have a function called head and a function called tail. So we're going to do, I assume, head of empty cars. And we're going to run this. Okay, so this shows only the first six rows of data. Now, before we submit, I want to see real quick what tail, do, tail is. Uh, it's the end, but I'm assuming it's also six rows, so I'm assuming it's the last six rows. Uh, yeah, six also. Alright, so I have to change this back to head if I want to submit. And I'm just going to submit because this is fairly simple and straightforward. So they're saying how we could do a question mark in the name of a function, like question mark vector, and we could get information that we can do question mark empty cars and get information, like help information. Okay, I was confused about some things from this exercise. So I searched a question and found this Stack Overflow uh, page. What is the practical difference between data frame and data table in R? And the one thing I'm just going to read real quick is, all data tables are also data frames. Loosely speaking, you can think of data tables as data frames with extra features. However, in the exercise, it says data set, not data table, so I'm assuming a data set and a data frame are actually the same. I don't know. All right. For this exercise, our goal is to look at the structure, which is str, of empty cars. For uh, structure, they said uh, this is often the first thing that you'll do in receiving a new data set or data frame. And they start out with some of the first things that you learn from this. Uh, one thing I notice is that the type of every variable in the data frame is number or numeric. All right, I'm going to submit. Okay, so... In in this exercise, we are creating our first data frame. Uh, we're doing the eight planets of the solar system. I thought that Pluto got reclassified to being a planet, but I don't know. Maybe that's not true. Or maybe this was written before that, and they haven't gone back and changed it. I don't know. Or maybe it got classified as a planet, but like a small planet, so it's technically a planet, but not really considered. I don't know. Forget it. This isn't about that. Our data has four things 
we wanted to know it has the type. It's either terrestrial or a gas giant. It has a diameter, a rotation, and if it has rings or not. And then the first is the name of the planet. And they created these for us as vectors. So on line 17, they have for us a variable that is meant to hold the data frame. So we create data dot frame, open parentheses. Now I'm supposed to pass in each vector in the order they tell me as an argument. So I want to print this out just to see it. I don't know if it'll accept it if I submit it like that, but at least for us to see it. Okay, so there's the planet names. There's the type, diameter, rotation, and if it has rings or not. Let's submit. Oh, it does let me submit it if I print it out the thing. All right, our next exercise is to inspect the data frame we just created. Maybe that's why we didn't print it out. Oh, because if you're working with a large set of data, maybe you wouldn't care as much about just printing the whole thing out, but you want to look at the structure of plan planet's DF data frame. So it has eight observations of five variables. From what I can tell, that means the observations, there's eight planets. So every vector in here had eight uh, items in it. There's five variables, meaning there were five vectors or five um, items of information. Now, on name and type, it says it was a factor. I don't remember those being factors. I thought they were all vectors. But it did get right the number of levels because the planet names could have eight different ones, but the types, we only had two types. All right, I'll submit. Okay, the next exercise, we learn how to select elements from a data frame, which I think is where I got stuck in the data manipulation. So the first thing they want us to do is print the diameter of Mercury. So we're going to call planets df. We're going to use open square brace or select. And then it says it's the first row and the third column. Now we're going to print all the data for Mars, which is planets df open square bracket, fourth row, and no column because we want all the columns. So this line at the very top of the console is the diameter of Mercury. I don't know what unit that's in, but it's obviously not meters or something. And then here we have the entire row of Mars, and it also gives us the, the header with the the names of the rows. Submit. So now they want us to select using the column name, which will be a lot better because it might be easier to remember the name of the column. We're going to do rows 1 through 5 of diameter. And run this. So here's the first five rows of diameter, which does not give us the header column. So now we're learning a new trick to select an entire column. Because what we have so far, we would use a comma and either put the column number or the column name. But another thing we can do is to put planets df, then you put a dollar sign, then you put the name of the column. We're storing that in a vector, 
and then we're printing out the vector. And so this will be the diameter column. We're not selecting diameter, we're meant to select the ring. Okay, there you got choose and falses. So our exercise, they want us to only select the planets that do have rings. So where rings vector equals true, they've got it so that it will print out the names. The, it'll print out the names of the planets that have rings. But they want us to print out every column are the planets that have names. And the way you select every column is to not put anything in the column space. So when you do that, you get a header. You got the names. We tell that rings are true. That's interesting. So now we're learning a new function, which is called subset. And the point is to be able to select only specific rows or columns, just like we've already been doing. So we, to use the subset function, we pass in planets df, and then we say subset equals, and the condition we want is diameter less than 1. If I run this, we get three results. Oh wow. So does that mean Earth is bigger than Mars? I guess Venus is pretty close to the size of, or pretty close to one. I don't know what we are. Great, not only is the subset function more concise, it is probably also more understandable for people who read your code. Continue to the next exercise. Okay, we, in this exercise, we're learning a new function called order, but this isn't really an exercise, because they just say experiment and play around with this function. So I'm going to see if I can order the horsepower column of MT cars. I'm assuming I cannot. Here, hang on, let me see. Um... I think order has done something because this is the original and this is with order. But I do not know what it did because you have three here, you have one here, you have six in between. I don't, I'm not good with open ended either. So they want us to use the positions variable they created to store the order of. Planets DF, and we're going to select only the diameter. So, this one I'm more confused about. We're going to use planets DF, and then they say inside the square brackets is the positions vector as row indexes. It says I need a column, which is the second number. I don't think this is right, but I'm going to try it. Huh. So is our diameter in order? It is. Mercury, Mars, Venus, Earth, Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter. Uh, and it turns out Venus is the planet the closest to our size. So I'll submit. Positions is a vector, and positions tells the order of the plants. This is confusing. Alright, so that is the end of data frames. When I return, we shall be talking about lists.